All right, let's get this rolling. Those who ruled in their kingdoms. Those who gave counsel because they were intelligent. Isn't it great to have a bunch of young people around? Don't step on them blue suede shoes. Four-footed people. All right, I got you thinking. Now be quiet for a minute. <laughs> Biblical scholars have not known what to do for a long time with these intertestamental writings. But as you hear these words from Sirach, you'll know that there is wisdom and to this body of literature called wisdom literature does this book belong Sirach 44 1 through 14 him in honor of our ancestors let us now sing the praises of famous men our ancestors in their generations the Lord apportioned them to great glory his majesty from the beginning there were those who ruled in their kingdoms and made a name for themselves by their valor those who gave counsel because they were intelligent, those who spoke in prophetic oracles. Those who led the people by their counsels and by their knowledge of the people's lore, they were wise in their words of instruction. Those who composed musical tunes or put verses in writing. Rich men endowed with resources, living peacefully in their homes. All these were honored in their generations and were the pride of their times. Some of them have left behind a name so that others declare their praise. But of others, there is no memory. They have perished as though they had never existed. They have become as though they had never been born, they and their children after them. But these were also godly men whose righteous deeds have not been forgotten. Their wealth will remain with their descendants and their inheritance with their children's children. Their descendants stand by the covenants, their children also, for their sake. Their offspring will continue forever and their glory will never be bottled out. Their bodies are buried in peace, but their name lives on generation after generation. These are words from sacred texts that continue to inspire our love and worship of the living God. Gracious God, because of all of the light that we see in these candles in front of us, we, we know what it's like to be surrounded by such a great cloud of witnesses who have gone on before us, and for them we give you thanks. May we do them honor and justice by living lives that give you glory and further the ministry of your son, Jesus the Christ. And the people were heard to say, Amen. So, I'm going to give you a, a little, little uh, insight into this book. And if you were able to hear Viv and, and Mitch, you know that it, it lifted up the importance of honoring our ancestors. Now, keep in mind, this book was written 200 years before Jesus walked around on the earth. So there's some wisdom about this that continues to this day. And what I liked about this is that it, it lifts up a huge range of people for whom we should be, uh, whom, whom we should be honoring, not just one-dimensional. Um, but, but what was interesting in this text is that it says that some of them have left behind a name so that others declare their praise, but others, there is no memory. And Ben Sirah, who wrote this book, believed that the people were remembered if they were godly people. In other words, they, they were remembered generation after generation for the goodness that they've done. And we certainly know some of those people. Can I get a witness on that? Uh, but as a good pastor trained in biblical criticism, which means you look at what the Bible meant, might have meant in its day, and what it might mean for us now, is you know you have to approach it thinking. So I thought to myself, aren't there other people that we know and remember who weren't particularly godly? So, so this was the interesting thing I was asking myself is it, maybe, it's, maybe it's more than simply whether they were godly that they're remembered over the generations. If we're completely honest, this, this happens to be Attila the Hun. Just in case you've forgotten your middle century. Uh, and uh, Osama bin Laden will probably be remembered for, for generations. And unfortunately, his image 
um, and I almost didn't put this picture up here because it's been too easy for people in this country to make the connection that everyone who is Muslim who might look like Osama bin Laden is going to act like Osama bin Laden, which is not true, correct? So it's up there because he is an example of someone who will be remembered not because he was godly, but because he was rather dastardly. Now the last picture is going to really be controversial because if you have a $20 bill in your, wallet, in your wallet, you have this picture. And who is it? Andrew Jackson, right. I don't remember. Somebody probably knows which president he was. 14th? No? Okay, the qu that quiz is over. Somebody knows it, I'm sure. <laughs> Andrew Jackson, um, and the reason I'm lifting up Andrew Jackson is because he's, he's more human and like us than some of these other scoundrels. Because Andrew Jackson did some truly wonderful things for the country. But he also was the architect of the Indian Removal Act of 1830, which created the Trail of Tears for all of the primarily Cherokee and Seminole tribes that had to walk all the way to Oklahoma and over 4,000 Native Americans died because they were forced to leave their homeland. Um, so I, I lift up Andrew Jackson as an example from someone within our own history that may be um, revered, and yet um, he had this vision of taking over land and Indians weren't even considered human. Um, that's not godly behavior. With me on that? So today, I'm just aware that it isn't whether you're remembered over generations that if you're godly, you'll be remembered over generations. It doesn't have anything to do with that because there are some ungodly people that are remembered for a long time, unfortunately. And it tells us that as people, we have the power of choice and free will to decide which saints we want to emulate. Right? So we, we get to choose. And um, I just put three of my favorites up here, the Maya Angelou, who po poet laureate, and um, I, I've, I, heard, I have heard her speak a couple of times, and she is one of the most grace-filled humans I've ever met. Um, and her writing is profound because of what she came through as a young child who was sexually abused. And to get to the place where you could actually write beautiful poetry and be loving of all people is something I aspire to. I don't plan to be poet laureate anytime soon, but, but being a kind person who can embrace lots of various people. Of course, this is Robin Williams, and Robin Williams I put up here because um, he was brilliant and funny. And those two things are really important, and I, I like to emulate them too. I put him up here too because he's a person who took his own life. Um, and it just acknowledges that sometimes people live as long as they can. Um, and that means that the fullness with which they lived can continue to be an inspiration. And it doesn't just get wiped out because they take their own life because they just it's too painful to continue living. You with me on that? So we can lift up people even if they do what might be considered a sin, kill themselves because killing's not good. And yet I know people who have lived with profound challenges that, that make a choice which for them feels like the most loving thing to do. And it hurts us probably as much if not more than the one who takes his or her life. And yet, Robin Williams was a profound inspiration for me. Um, this last person um, is Frederick Beekner. And um, this is a, kind of an interesting thing because Beekner's actually still alive. He's 93. Um, he has written prolifically, uh, one of the theologians that I have most appreciated over the course of my time as a minister. He wrote a book called Listening to Your Life, um, and it's a collection of um, daily meditations. Frederick Buechner was probably one of the most prolific writers of uh, novels and theological works in the 70s and 80s, published over 30 books. And for some reason, for the past eight years or so, ten, he has gone quiet. He's been unable to write. He 
he's been unable to connect. Um, he still lives in Vermont. He's a Presbyterian pastor. Um, and interestingly enough, when he was attending a Presbyterian church in, in New York City, Madison Avenue Presbyterian and George Buttrick was the was the pastor there when he heard Frederick tell him that I was called, I'm, I think I'm called to be a minister, Buttrick said to him, oh, it would be a shame to lose a magnificent novelist to get a mediocre pastor. <laughs> George Buttrick could be a bit of a, <clears throat> I don't have to spell it for you, do I? Um, so, so Frederick Beekner reminded me of, of people, my mother for example, and lots of people that we probably have in our lives who were something once, but now they're something else. Um, and I just think it's so important on All Saints Day to recognize those transitions that people go through. And the interesting thing is, as, as I've said to you before, uh, my mother's memory now is up limited to about 15 seconds. And so she's the happiest she's ever been in her life because she can't remember long enough to know what she's supposed to be doing because she doesn't have to do anything. She just has to be happy. And uh, it's just an amazing gift. And I never thought my mother would teach me this lesson. Um, and yet she has. And I'm guessing if I, I would like to be able to visit Frederick Beekner because there's probably something about, yes, he had the, uh, this prolific... Um, writing career and he probably still has something in his person now even if it's very different from that very successful author. So I've left these empty picture frames up here because I'm just guessing that you may have some saints who kind of fall into the celebrity or famous category. Saints for you, someone who has been an inspiration makes you a better person by emulating them. Anybody got a famous saint they want to call out? Sorry? Langston Hughes. Dalai Lama. Robert. Say it again. Charlton Heston. Someone else? Mitch? Mr. Rogers. Nice. Nikki. Elvis. <laughs> Don't step on them blue suede shoes. Van Gogh. I think I heard Van Gogh. Roy Rogers. Sons of the Pioneer. Okay. All right. I got you thinking. Now be quiet for a minute. I did my job. Keep going. Tell each other at coffee hour. So here are some more personal saints, um, because typically I'm thinking about people I've known personally and those bigger people that I haven't known personally, but they've made an effect on my life. And this happens to be my Uncle Tom. He was uh, my mom's youngest brother. And just to show you how old this is, this is our son Jacob, who is now wouldn't need to be standing on the bench to be that much taller than I am. Um, but my uncle passed away three, uh, three or four years ago. And um, I have just, he has been very present for me lately, um, and I can't really explain it, just that he has been present, um, and his wisdom and his sense of humor, his love of single malt scotch, um, and his, his uh, long-time profession as a book scout. He just loved books and found them for other people. Um, and, and here's another white German guy. This is uh, William Gohegan. And he was my professor of religion in college, and he's the one that when I went to see him two years after I graduated, he, and I was working at a small branch of the University of Maine, and students were coming to me with all these different problems and everything, and I was looking for the chaplain, and there was no chaplain, and he said to me, they're telling you that you're the chaplain. So he could name that sense of calling early on. That was just a great gift. And he didn't push me into it either. Um, also got me a graduate scholarship. So, so this might seem sacrilegious, but um, four-footed four people, well, people, yeah, listen. <laughs> I'm anthropomorphizing this, aren't I? Pets have been profoundly helpful to me in terms of their unconditional love 
the way in which they can make me laugh, um, the way I can be um, accountable to another creature who is, uh, needs me. Um, so it's, uh, it, I'm guessing any of you have any, uh, any of these personal, your personal saints? This is what this day is about. The people on whose shoulders we stand and the way we make choices about who it is that we see is worthy of being undergirded by. Just great gifts from God. And I just want to leave you with this one image. This is a mosaic that's made up of lots of individual faces of people. And this is what we are. We are connected one with another. We don't all have to be Christian to be connected. But this is, this is what I understand when Paul talks about the body of Christ. It's all of us together, all of us together seeking goodness and to be godly and to make righteous decisions, which mean right in terms of how can I live a life worthy of love and grace and compassion and the arc of the gospel, which is God's unconditional love for you and for all people. Remember the saints. Remember that you will be a saint one day, which might guide some of the decisions you make now. May God add a blessing to his people, to this word, and may it lead us to life that's even more abundant than we can imagine. In the name and in the spirit of Jesus, we pray and say together, amen. Welcome to Bethel Congregational UCC. No matter where you are on your faith journey, you're welcome here.